everyone, I'm Ace of Clay and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. This week I took a trip to the thrift store and I got this little robot Santa guy that I'm going to transform into a more terrifying version of himself. <laughs> so if you want to see how I do it, then check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Ace of Clay and let's get started. <laughs> All right, let's get started. I've got my little Santa robot here. I got him for $1.99 at the thrift store. Let's see if he still works. There we go. And he also plays music. That's not annoying at all. I think he was so cheap because no one wants these things. Anyway, let's go ahead and start by removing his head. I want to see what we're working with. There's two screws on each side of his neck, and we're going to undo those and get this thing off. Sorry, little guy. And once the screws are out, let's go ahead and wrestle it off. Pretty secure. All right, there we go. Nice little plastic blow mold head. And let's take his jacket off, see what's underneath. There we go, very basic sort of robot structure thing going on here. And I'm gonna take off his hat and then realize that I am not going to sculpt over his face. I'm actually gonna sculpt him an entirely new head. So let's ball up some aluminum foil and think about the process. And once I've decided on a course of action, let's start covering that aluminum foil with some Super Sculpey Living Doll. Gonna get the entire surface covered and smooth it out. Once I've got his head shape established, it's time to start marking the facial features, starting with the eye sockets, using this nice ball stylus to shape those out, kinda get those into their position, and then we can go from there, start working out the bridge of the nose then i notice when i'm not really sure what i want to do i just spend a lot of time smoothing and i'm thinking what i want this thing's face to look like while i'm doing it and once i've decided on a course of action i'm going to cut out his mouth i want him to have a big open mouth with some gnarly teeth and you know a tongue all that so let's go ahead and carve it out of our foil with our excel blade use code ace of clay at excelblades.com to save 15 percent on your purchase then I'm using my ball stylus to smooth out that foil, and then we're going to cover it with some more clay. And because I don't want his mouth to fall off his face, let's go ahead and give him a bottom lip and chin. And I'm just going to work that mouth until I get it to a point that I like. Kind of looks like a fish right now, but we're just kind of working through this Voldemort fish stage. And one thing I like about Living Doll Super Sculpey is that you can have it on your sculpture unreinforced like I do around the mouth area here and it will hold its shape very well. It won't droop or anything. I really enjoy this clay. And now we have fully entered the ugly phase of our sculpture where we want to ball it up and start over. But we're not going to. We're going to keep going and add some more facial features to make myself feel better. And whenever I do that, it's always the, the smile lines. It's never like the eyes or anything. I always need to picture the mouth better to make my decision. And then working on that mouth kind of messed up our eye shapes. So we're going to fix those and then go back to the chin, get that nice and smooth. And then we can start carving out the inside of the mouth a little bit more, get that bottom lip flushed out and really start making it look like how we want it to. And I got a little carried away with the depth in my eye sockets, so we're going to add some more clay and bring the eyes out a little, a little more. And I'm still not sold, but I'm not hating it either. So we're just going to keep going. I got my spoon tool here. We're going to refine the mouth, refine the eye sockets a little bit more, get that nose on or lack thereof. It's just going to be a little skeletal nose with two front-facing nostrils. Now I just want to bring the cheeks out a little bit more by adding another little piece of clay. And then once that's on and shaped out, we're gonna blend it in. One of the best properties of Living Doll Clay is that it blends so easily. I absolutely love this stuff for that reason. And it bakes without moonies. I don't know how they did it, but it, there, you'll never get a moonie in Living Doll Clay. 
um, well don't never say never but you know for the most part all right let's go ahead and pop in his eyes i got this little bean shape in there then i'm going to use this tool that looks like a butter knife and rock it back and forth to create the eyes and the eyelids simultaneously now let's refine everything a little bit with my explorer tool Now let's poke in his nostrils with this tiny ball stylus, like so, nice and skeletal. And then let's move on to some wrinkles on his upper lip. I'm gonna bring these all the way to his nose. And I had a lot of wrinkles, so let's just speed that up a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on his other eye. You can kind of see this one better because of the angle. Now let's add some eye bags. This guy's really showing his age now. And to finish off the eye area, let's go ahead and pop on some little tapered snakes of clay to create an angry brow. Now to refine everything and add some more wrinkles, we're using this cone rubber shaper, just getting right in there between the brows, adding some wrinkles above his nose, and some forehead wrinkles, of course. Now we're just going to cover all of his face with wrinkles, light ones, deep ones, just sort of crisscrossing our tool on the surface. Now it's time to add some teeth. We're going to pop in the gums first on the top, get those pressed on, and then we can use this ball stylus to create the cavities for each of the teeth. And then we can start popping the teeth in with a little bit of bacon bond. Now when I add the teeth, I'm just adding this sort of neutral ball cylinder type shape and then I'm finalizing them with my spoon tool after they're attached. This is how I like doing it when I don't pre-bake my teeth. And we're going to repeat this process for the bottom teeth. Now once all the bottom teeth are in and refined, let's go ahead and finish everything off with a couple different tools. And then of course, give him a tongue. It's kind of off to the side. He's kind of in this like, uh, position. You know that TikTok period, uh, period, yeah, he's doing that. Now let's pop on some ears. And 
once the ears are done, I'm just gonna go in again with that cone shaper tool and add some more wrinkles and finish this guy off. Add some pores here and there and get this guy ready for the oven. All right, let's bake him. And once he's baked and cooled down, I removed this piece because I want the head to turn around in a complete 360. <laughs> I think that's a lot freakier than it just sort of bobbing side to side. So there we go. There's our possessed Santa and that lovely. Let's paint him. I'm using some more paints. I'm going to start with this nice dark brown wash, get it into all the nooks and crannies and bring this guy to life. And once the skin is done, I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside of his mouth dark red. And I'm just going to lighten my red a little bit and paint his tongue. And now his teeth, this nice decaying yellow shade. And before I start painting his eyes, I want to darken the eye sockets a little bit. All right, now let's go ahead and paint the whites of his eyes and then add his irises. Now let's finish everything off with a little red in his waterline and some green veins. And we're gonna add a quick light gray dry brushing on the surface here and there just to make his skin look dry and dead. And let's go ahead and make his mouth nice and shiny with some Americana triple thick high gloss varnish. The best varnish you're gonna get for your polymer clay sculptures without using resin. And of course we gotta varnish his eyes too. there we go his head is done let's go ahead and start working on his body for the first step we just want to dirty everything up with some watered down black and a really big paintbrush and this fabric is really cheap and synthetic and it just wasn't taking the paint very well at all so I just really had to go on there heavy with it and it works out in the end but it it took a couple extra dabs to get it to look how I wanted to now let's get his coat on and do the same thing to that There we go, nice and dirty. I pop in a blue Christmas light into his little candle too for a little creepy effect. And once that's done, we're gonna set it aside to dry and start giving him some hair. I'm using this white synthetic wool and I'm going to attach it to his face with some Fabri-Tac. This is the best glue you're ever gonna use to attach fabric or hair to your polymer clay sculptures.
And once his hair is all on, I'm going to use a very sharp pair of scissors to give him a quick trim. Make it look nice and shaggy and scraggly. Now let's stick on his head for the moment of truth. And there we go. <laughs> That's pretty messed up, but I didn't think about the beard and hair sticking to his clothes, so it just kind of gets tangled around his neck, and I'm not sure how to fix that. But this made it a little better. I just cut off the huge collar, and it kind of helped, but it still gets really tangled in there. I probably should have just used like regular synthetic hair, but it's fine. I'm not going to ever have this thing turned on, to be honest with you. So... That's okay. I'm just going to turn it on for you guys. Now let's attach his little Santa hat. Do you see how good that Fabri-Tac works? Like, I barely press it on. The grab is so good with that stuff. Let's position that. There we go. Very nice. And for the last step, we're going to add some drool stretching from his teeth. So we just got some Fabri-Tac on the tip of my skewer. And I'm taking it from one tooth to another making sure there's a nice line of drool, like so. And one more piece. Now say it with me. And he's done. My creepy Santa transformation is complete. Let me know what you think of him in the comments. The sound just makes it that much worse. I still need to put a little light bulb in there. But I think he's cool. I think he's creepy. I think it's really annoying that his beard gets caught when he turns his head around, but that's okay. Um, I Like I said, I'm, I'm never gonna have this thing turned on in my house. So <laughs> let me know what you think of him in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Ace of Clay. Happy holidays, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.